Gavin Fox Smith's STEM path has come from a background in the sciences to a prominent career in medical technologies. He's the chair of the MedTech Association of Australia, an ambassador or director of a number of other social initiatives. As vice president at Johnson & Johnson of Global Education Solutions and a male champion of change, he sees the huge potential for STEM in Australia's future and the role women have to play in it. Thanks for your time, Gavin. Well, thanks very much, Derek, for coming and uh, having a chat to me. So why is technology and the rest of the disciplines so important at this point in Australia's journey? I, I think we're seeing a pivot in our economy from the primary industry commodity type economy supported by big traditional manufacturing to now a knowledge-based technology enabled economy. So I think if we look at STEM as a fundamental part of innovation, of technology, of new thinking, uh, I think STEM is critical to Australia in defining our place in the new, the new world. You absolutely need the arts and humanities. I think we all know that. But we also need to recognise that STEM is all about deep innovation, deep thinking, how do we create the future for our economy? We celebrate celebrity, we celebrate art, we celebrate sport, but we do have to begin to celebrate in all its glory, the science, technology, engineering and maths fields as well. What's the uh, relevance of actually accessing STEM offshore in the future, as opposed to developing onshore? Well, I think that's a great question. I, I think that we create career paths yep for those really fantastic thinkers in all of the disciplines of STEM yep. and, and build early, mid and high level career pathways. Right. And, and I think for us to do that uh, as an economy, in fact as a country, is an imperative for our future. Because right. otherwise we will simply get run over by the rest of the world used in the right way, yep. add capability where we don't have that capability. Sure. Many people working in the med tech, pharma tech, uh, high technology industries that are here on 457 visas are contributing enormously to our economy. So I think that's a very positive thing. Uh, to my earlier point, I don't think it should be a substitute for us developing our own talent in, in the STEM space particularly. However, there are clearly major economies around the world that they are just going to have more capability just by sheer size of numbers. The more focus on STEM will, on one hand, create more jobs, uh, but on the other hand, it'll create more competition for jobs. So where do you think industry will support that in the next 20 years, for example? Well, that's a very tough question. I mean, you know... Because there's a retention angle in terms of keeping people on shore as well. Well, uh, look, I think that goes back to the whole talent development piece, and, and that is are companies and organisations providing STEM pathways uh, for those professionals? And, and, you know, STEM is not just people in a white coat. STEM can provide you with many great careers. How much of it would you have seen as uh, disinterest from uh, women or girls coming through the education system or disencouragement? I think your question is a very deep one and there are lots of nuanced answers to it. Sure. I, I, I think part of it is gender stereotyping, part of it is role modelling as well, and I think part of it also is uh, how are we teaching the sciences and the maths. Mm. And that's what uh, all of us have to do is to make the system at school, at university, in workplaces yeah. gender equal. What is surprising is only 25% of IT graduates are female. Yeah. Only something like 10% of engineering graduates are female. Now, what are we doing to address statistics like that? I'm a great believer in inspiration. So who, how and why are we inspiring girls to take on STEM discipline? People like Michelle Simmons winning Australian of the Year. Yeah. As a scientist, we've now got somebody that people can go, wow, here is somebody who has had an awesome career, yep. massive contribution to Australia, and has been recognised as Australian of the Year as a scientist yep. and as a female. A celebrity in the true sense. Correct. You know, when Buddy Franklin 
um, goes to a school that, you know, it'll make news everywhere. Right, right. Whereas maybe Michelle Simmons going to, you know, Mount Druid High yep. is probably not going to attract the same attention. Yeah, but it has the same value. As, it possibly has more value, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. And then we put the filter on it of gender. Right, right. And I think that's where we really begin to look at the amazing opportunities we have, mm. not just in rebalancing to STEM, but rebalancing on a gender basis as well. If we reframe the question, what is Australia's greatest opportunity in 20 years? I think it's STEM, because STEM will, is the basis of innovation. And, and I think innovation is the basis of Australia's future. Our company, Johnson & Johnson, three years ago started supporting the Eureka Awards. I guess the Nobel Prizes of Australia. And they're purely around science and they are just a wonderful celebration of incredibly bright people, 99.9% yep. .9 of whom the rest of the Australian population wouldn't know. <laughs> so, so, you know, I think, I think the excitement of STEM, uh, I think the inspiration, and, and then I think maybe the really big hook is, this is the future of our country. Right. As well as the recognition, of course. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. That was fun. Thanks very much. Cheers. Great. Enjoyed that. Thank you.